Hello, my lonely trollops. I'm here to, with you today to review uh, The American Senator by Anthony Trollope, uh, published in 1877. Uh, this is a part of Steve Donahue's Year of the Lonely Trollops, where he's reading a selection of, uh, of, of uh, standalone tro Anthony Trollope novels, a uh, great Victorian novelist, uh, uh, not as crazy gothic as uh, Charles Dickens, um, much more of kind of a he is an Anthony Trollope is an artist, but he's a very humble kind of crafts craftsman artist. Still, like basically, we're talking an, a, a craftsman as in a Renaissance master is a craftsman of his art. Anthony Trollope is a craftsman of the great the great novel. Uh, and in the American Senator, we have another another interesting example of that. Uh, the, these uh, these aren't. I uh, wouldn't say that this is somewhere where, that someone should probably begin with Anthony Trollope, but this is definitely someone who has fallen in love with Anthony Trollope, perhaps through his Palliser novels or his Barstashire Barst novels, uh, should definitely come and have a visit, especially for a certain central central character, not a titular character, but a central character. Uh, so what is the story of this book? Well, uh, John Morton uh, is a uh, he's a part of the Morton family who is um, owned the great Bragdon Bragdon uh, Bragdon estate in uh, around uh, Dillsboro for they've no, owned it for many 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 years probably gener a couple of generations uh, he though as a child has been kind of uh, brought up away from it and indeed now he is the uh, secretary to the British legation in in Washington but he's re he's returning home returning to his estate and is going to kind of take up take up his position at the estate as kind of the, 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 uh, as the master, the master there. He's bring he brings home with him his, uh, the woman he's apparently, uh, is going to be his, his, his fiance, Arabella Trif Trifoil, uh, and his, and Arabella Trifoil's mother, uh, Lady Augustus. Uh, and with them comes along an American senator, the titular American senator, Elias Godebed, who, uh, senator of a, uh, what sounds like more of a kind of a northern, is it northern? A uh, northern um, uh, um, fictional American state, uh, and the the senator has come to uh, study the English study the English ways, make a study of it, uh, with the eye of he's going to give a lecture here in uh, in in England, and then he's going to go back to the states and give lectures there about the the English the in English life. Um, so, but what we find as 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 the thing opens is Arabella Trefoil. Uh, she, uh, who uh, Trollope makes uh, great descriptions of how she seemed this way, she seemed kind of that way, is actually a fortune hunter, uh, is someone who's, who uh, she and her mother are basically penniless. Her father seems to have been a bit of a, it was a bit of, a, is, is a bit of a wastrel. They don't have any money. They live a kind of a vagabond existence going from place to place, kind of living on people's sufferances, hunting, hunting a, a, a suitable mate for Arabella and she wants she's aiming high she wants she wants power she wants wealth she wants status uh and uh she's yes she's she's a uh, fiance to uh John Morton who might be kind of a big thing in his own little little dinky community uh but uh, this this does not. She is really miserable because this is way lower than what she was going for but she's also getting older however she's decided now that she's in this area, she's going to make the big grass for the golden hoop, uh, and and basically kind of forces John Morton to take her over to Lord Rufferford's uh, estate, Rufferford Hall, and uh, there she's going to hunt Lord Rufferford, and indeed um, gets over there, ends up staying there. John Morton just leaves. He's 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 not adult. He kind of understands what's going on, and but is sort of too much of a gentleman to just completely cast her off because like I am. I, she is my fiance, so I can't do that. It's not happy with it. But she leaves leaves her there. There's great fox hunting because Anthony Trollope is all about the fox hunt. It's the kind of it's the action part of Anthony Trollope novels where you'll have a great fox hunt and you'll have the horses galloping and uh, inevitably, you know, terrible things happen to either horses or man. And indeed, in this one, um, there's a terrible fox hunting accident. Somebody gets kicked in the head and the poor horse gets shot, which uh, seems like bullshit for the horse. Uh, and, um, and, and, and so Arabella is able to 
it to kind of insinuate herself in with uh, Lord Rutherford, like, oh, lean on his shoulder. And so the hunt is on. He's, she's going to, she's trying to make a claim to him. She's going to try, she tries to, she basically through any method she can to, to basically claim that, oh, he's going to, he's, 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 he proposed to me. He, he wants to be my husband. Uh, and, and thus that, thus that whole segment of the novel kind of takes place of, of her pushing her, pushing, lying, being, you know, Tro uh, Trollope does not like this Arabella. He's, he's, he, he's basically, yeah, she's a gold digger. She's a liar. She's scheming. She's, you know, she does everything she can to kind of, to get her way. Uh, at, the, at the same, at the same time, uh, we've got Mary Masters, uh, sort of the foil to Arabella Trefoil, uh, the, the kind of the really nice girl who, was brought up at Bragdon Bragdon Hall, uh, but she's like the uh, the the daughter of um, the the family the family lawyer, so she's kind of pretty pretty humble thing. But she's always she's always been in love with Reginald Reginald Morton, who is uh, an estranged cousin of John Morton, and. Uh, Oh, uh, you know, it's like, oh, I love, I love him, I love him, but I could, I, ne I could never say, and oh, I'm too humble of a position. And it turns out that ah, actually, when original Morton comes, is is you know, meets her again, he likes her too. Except there's this Larry T T Twentyman, uh, kind of a gentleman yeoman, gentleman farmer who uh, is is sweet on her and is wooing her, and he's like, oh, well, obviously he's. She's into him and stuff, and, and indeed Mary's uh, stepmother is really pushing this as the, as the marriage. It's like you shouldn't, you know. D what do you think you're going to get something better than Larry Twentyman? Like, you know, don't go above your station, kind of that sort of thing. And Mary's like, no, it's not like she's as the foil, or or maybe Arabella is supposed to be the foil, trefoil. Um, uh, that she's like, no, I, I don't care about status. I don't care about riches. I just love Reginald. I've always loved. I've always loved Reginald. So she's kind of the pure at heart, you know, oh, you know, she, she, she just, she, she loves this guy who is above her state is above her station, but she's been raised. She's been raised kind of above her station, uh, in a lot of ways, been given kind of given thoughts above her station by probably being, by being raised at Bragdon Hall. At least that's what, uh, the very, uh, kind of humble born, um, stepmother thinks and uh, as as a result they they try and do the, that thing that in a lot of Trollope novels they do which is they twist the screws and they try and force the female to to do what the family says do the sensible thing um which is always a tension in these novels of forcing you know the problem of females and making sure that they marry correctly they marry how uh the mothers and the fathers or the aunts and the uncles the family the the, the structure the, the society wants them to do it um, and, uh, I guess the fourth, fourth kind of strand we have here is, uh, Senator Elias Godebed, who, yes, he's come to the country to, uh, to, um, to study English ways. He, of course, immediately trods in it, uh, decides to defend, uh, a vulpicider, a vulpicide, um, which is the murder of a fox without, without the, uh, use of hounds. There's a word that is, it's vulpicide. It's not, it's not fox hunting that's okay but vulpicide which is murdering foxes without the use of hounds and and stuff like that this, which is terrible which i mean this is a part of the thing that he's come he's come here it's like you guys are crazy like kind of he, he talks about just the illogical stuff that he sees in in english society as a as a foreigner he sees like the corruption of the rotten boroughs where basically a couple of lords control parliamentary seats and stuff like that he's he sees the appointment of uh the reverends uh, and in a hilarious scene in this book, he's at a dinner party with the reverends, the religious types, and is talks about how horribly corrupt it is that you can buy buy the thing with very men who have indeed bought their had had their positions bought for them, uh, and really offends them, really gets them, really gets them upset. Uh, and in this this all, he he is an annoying. Uh, ass of a character who of course is like well why is everyone so upset i'm just saying a fact if i if i said something untrue you should just it's like he has he has it's like if you had this character today you would say oh he must be somewhere on the autistic scale because he is so blind to uh social cues to just 
basic human nature to politeness or anything like that. Um, maybe that's how the English uh, viewed viewed Americans. Uh, there's also sort of just the commentary of there's a there's a running thing between Americans and uh, and uh, the English and you know English and Canadians and Australians. I think uh, Trollope may have gotten in trouble for writ- writing about the Australians uh, in a vaguely any any vaguely kind of annoying way, uh, negative way. I mean, you still get that today where I know that the New York Times will write something about Canada and I'm sure no Americans even think twice about it. Becomes, but it becomes like a front page story in Canada of like, how dare they say that about us? Or what, they think Toronto is on the West Coast? What the hell? It's like, you know, that, 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 that super sensitivity that we get when an outsider uh, talks shit. We're like, we can talk crap about our country, but you can't. You can't. That kind of, that kind of thing. And indeed, when he gives, he gives a lecture because he feels it's his duty. I mean, that's the one thing you have to say about him. He feels like this is my duty to help you guys is to kind of come here and point out the things that are wrong with your country. It's like, it's my duty to do this. So in, in that way, he gets, he gets a, he's slightly, slightly a little bit more sympathetic, but most of the ways it's like, why is this book called The American Senator? Um, but cause, so let me, let, okay. I've been nattering on for 11 minutes, but like, okay, there's, there's a general kind of scope of the score st- st- story. It's like 600 pages long. So it takes a little while to just get you up to, up, up to speed. Um, I have to say like when I started this Trollope novel, I found this a tough Trollope novel to get into because it starts off with a big swath of description, a swath of description of Dillsborough, this kind of little rural English town that the, the narrator basically says, well, why would anyone want to live here? Uh, and like, you know, and, and talking about all the characters before you actually are introduced to the characters and you get to know them and want to care about them, you're, you're getting described thing. And then we have the whole thing of, we've got, we've got, we've got John Morton and we've got Reginald Morton. And I have to say at the beginning of the book, I had trouble getting them, keeping them, keeping them like, which is, which one is which, especially, uh, you know, just at, at the beginning thing of we're describing is like, okay, who are you, which one are you, which one are you kind of thing that was the name confusion. So I found the, the start of this book kind of difficult that way. Uh, and then, yeah. And then the second thing is Elias go to bed. He is a fairly flat one note character, just like he's going to stumble into a situation. He's going to say, wow, why are you doing that? That's dumb. Uh, piss people off and then go along and uh, and do so, do it again and just be the clueless foreigner who who's just pointing out stuff and and is doing it in such kind of a in a way that you you side with the English you side with the those the the the, the super the fox killing with their hounds English which you should not be doing <laughs> at least I don't think you should be doing um and I mean I I think the the things that I, I, then when we get into stuff that I think does work, it's like you have the contrast between Mary Masters and Arabella Trefo- Trefoil. We've got two women who need, need, are, it's, it's about marriage. It's like Mary Masters, she's not aiming above her position, but that sort of, it comes to her, it comes to her so easy because perhaps it's a, it's a, she's such a good pure heart that it, it, be, it becomes like, a, oh, of course she's going to marry. Well, maybe, you know, no, no. No spoilers to the end of the book, but maybe she's her virtue is going to get rewarded. Whereas someone like Arabella Trefoil, who's a dirty down uh, gold digger, is going to get is is going to get a punishment. Uh, you would think. You would think. Uh, I mean, and the thing about Arabella Trefoil, I talked about Trollope saying like, oh, he describes her. He describes her, you know, as seeming and seeming. But he also, in the same kind of in that passage, he also says she could move. Like the way she moved was just, it was a, it was beautiful. It's like, she was a big, I think she calls her, he calls her a big girl, but she's just like, she's moved. She's got grace. She's got a certain kind of a, of a, of a way, a style. And I mean, when you start to hear about like, you know, basically her and her mother are, they're living on their wits. And a part of you thinks that like, well, of course you are, you're a woman in this society You and you, you're penniless and your father, you don't have, you don't have the male to be your kind of protector in this society. So you're going to have to go, you're going to have to, you know, either you're going to let the society run over you and you're going to be penniless and poor somewhere, or you're going to use your wits to get what you want, get what you need. I mean, um, perhaps it's because like Mary Masters isn't greedy while Arabella Trefoil, Trefoil is greedy. I mean, she could have gotten, she could get John Morton, but no, she's, she's like, no, I want the highest. I want the higher. I'm not going to be satisfied with what would have been 
um, materially a still a very comfortable position, but it wouldn't be where up where she wanted to be, and so that. So Arabella Trefoil is the star of this book uh, for me. Um, it's funny you you wonder. It's like because in the book, it's like it seems like Arabella, uh, like tr- the the narrator Trollope, the narrator really does not like Arabella, and you almost wonder if that is sort of almost like a tactic of I'm going to attack. Arabella, and that's going to actually kind of put the make the reader kind of cling to her more to be like, oh no, she, she's got points, and it's you almost wonder if that's like a narrative strategy on Trollope's point to kind of get you to kind of go, yeah, no, I side with Arabella. Uh, it's like, and I care about her, and I wouldn't have cared about her this gold digger uh, if you hadn't been so negative against her. It makes you you uh, side with her, and I mean, and the. Uh, the what I what I would put forward as kind of maybe evidence for that is how much uh, by the end of this book Arabella surprises you. Uh, something happens to John Morton, and how she reacts um, is not how you would expect. She takes her she takes her eye off the ball. She suddenly it's not all about gain, uh, and you know in the end it's like she seems a little bit resigned. Like I, she knows kind of like how bad of a creature she is she's got that self-knowledge which sort of some ways makes her like if she didn't know that she didn't know how bad she was and that basically like you know maybe you know i i you know i don't know i'd I'd prefer to have just die just die but i'll go on and me i doubt if anyone's ever going to love me kind of like that kind of uh thing and when you look at her mother who is also so much of a piece of work who is probably you get the sense has sculpted her daughter to be the man hunter that she has become um that doing and yet and yet and trollope trollope is so great that you can have a character like lady augustus who is who is a her her co-conspirator and in some ways even worse than arabella but at the end there's a thing of her going just like oh I am now, now that this is all over, now I am just alone. I'm an old woman with no money, with no friends. And, you know, you, you, you feel sympathy for her as well, which I think Trollope is great at just turning things that you can take kind of a rather despicable character like her and make you go, oh, she's a human being and I should, I should feel, I, I do feel sympathy for her as well, which is, um, I think if people criticize, uh, um, uh, Charles Dickens for doing such kind of grotesques kind of monsters. It's like tr- uh, Anthony Trollope does smaller, very human monsters, but also makes you go, and that's a human being. And then you have to go, oh, you know, you, 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 you hate her. You hate somebody, but Trollope will go. Yeah. But remember, but think about this from this side as well. And it's like, oh, it gets you. It gets you really well. Um, so, you know, that is the story. That is the story that you really, you really, uh, I clasp to. And it's, of course, with Trollope, that ends. And then we have a bunch of kind of, he loves his endings and it continues on with endings. We, we, we deal with the senator and he, in, in humorous and in good natured fashion, we end, we, we, we end with, uh, Mary Masters, who I think in, in the hands of uh, a lesser novel or a more sentimental novelist, uh, would be kind of it would be cloying actually comes off as as very sweet i i don't care about mary masters as much as i care about arabella trefoil but it, trefoil but it's like uh in, in the end it is it is kind of it is kind of sweet uh th- though though larry twentyman as the hero of our novel uh th- that's that's just like you're just goading me again it's like no no team team arabella uh the whole way the whole way so yeah, that's that's my that's my long and rambling talk about the American Senator. Uh, if you haven't read it, uh, I wouldn't recommend it be your first trollop. But if you if you're into the trollop, you got the trollop in your system. I I I would heartily recommend it as one to one to knock off your list of of the many treats that uh, Anthony Trollop has. Um, so I will as we're going forward. I don't I haven't watched Steve's. Uh, Final, final. He's been going through week by week on uh, this, and I, I had actually been going through week by week on on these books, but I decided I was just blathering for too long on that. And why not just concentrate it into one concentrated blather uh, at the end of the month? Uh, and uh, yeah, actually, I, th- I think I, I kind of I enjoyed that, even if I did way too much plot summary. So I am enjoying myself. Uh, so yeah, I guess I will tune into Steve's video, and I'll probably put. 
uh, some information down below what's the next Trollope novel. Uh, and I'll have probably his, his face will show up right here with, uh, his kind of the playlist of all his, uh, his, uh, Anthony Trollope discussions, uh, for th this year so far, and which will continue to get added to, uh, to find out what's on next month. All right. More videos later.